Hi everybody, welcome to the Gratitude, Inspiration and Happiness workshop for August. We are a week later than scheduled, however, um, we're all here and ready and ready to go. Our guest speaker tonight is Nasco. I'm not even going to attempt to butcher his name properly, so we'll just call him Nasco. He can introduce himself. Um, and then we have Kellyanne Mattis, we have Robin Lee Nichols, and myself just to finish off. And we have Anna with us supporting and pitching in uh, whenever, whenever she feels appropriate. So the topic for tonight is uh, the legacy that we'd like to leave behind. So without further ado, rather than me introducing everybody, what if we could just, when we start, um, just a brief introduction of ourselves um, and then go into our topic. So we'll start off, if I can bring Nasco forward, um, if you'd like to start. Sure. Hey guys, my name is Natsuko, formal name Atanas. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, nobody calls me Atanas apart from my mom when she's angry at me. Um, so, hey everybody, you're just my name Natsuko. Um, I'm Bulgarian by origin, living in the Netherlands, father of two kids, still working full time. Um, uh, recently, I've been mostly enjoying uh, the topic related to uh, purpose and meaning of life. Uh, not in general, but like my own personal meaning of life and uh, the topic of um, of gratitude and legacy, these two together, uh, they actually very much fit into my research and study about um, purpose, right? So um, I'm very happy to join this conversation today and I'm actually very much honored to be a guest speaker. That's about me, looking forward. Masco, would you like to go into your um, your presentation? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't have really a PowerPoint, if that was oh, the expectation. No, um, no even though... The way you, you want to share. Yeah, um, actually, Susan, you know me. I'm much better with presentation and PowerPoint because then there is something to guide me. Otherwise, I get just too much, um, you know, kind of uh, uh, leading astray. So... Since um, I, I wanted actually to, to check with you a couple of points regarding legacy, and I was um, I was wondering like what shall I share with you? There are so many aspects, right? And because I'm starting first, maybe then I will turn around my story in such a way that I define what legacy is for me mm -hmm. and what it means for me to leave a legacy, if you don't mind. Perfect. So let's start with this one. And uh, having in mind that English is not my first language, um, uh, I checked in the dictionary what, what uh, you know, legacy is. And I realized that um, uh, also in the dictionary, but also for many people, legacy is a noun. And it's, it, it is mostly uh, related with something to be received. Right? Very few people actually are into the mood of giving it. And yet even less people are in the mood of creating it. So um, looking into this, I wanted to drive my conversation, my discussion with you in such a way to actually inspire you to think about legacy, not as a noun, but as a verb. Like, can we, can we, how can we make it as a verb? Yeah, um, how can we do such things in life purposefully so actually we create legacy that remains behind us? And I would like to, st to start my story with, a, um, with an event that happened uh, to me uh, two weeks ago. Uh, I was back in, uh, in Croatia for a vacation and um, we were walking the dogs in the morning and then we passed through an old cemetery. And in the middle of the cemetery, there was a big erected monument. And um, yeah, we were just curious to see what it is. It, it was an old one, very traditional uh, Catholic one. So I stopped at the monument and I saw a name of a person. Um, I don't recognize the name, of course, but then immediately you see the, the, the two years, the year of birth and the year of death. Then there is a hyphen in between. And then you realize that everything that this person left is this hyphen. Right, it's in between these two dates, 
everything that his life was all about is this hyphen, this small strip, almost invisible. And then, and then obviously this, this monument was erected for him. Therefore, he obviously has left certain legacy behind. He has left something so that he deserved something to be of uh, of a memory to others. And all all of the other, let's say, uh, tombstones around, they represented also people with their hyphens, and they also left legacy one way or another. Uh, I stopped for a while just thinking about this, and I said, okay, how can 60, 70, 80 years of time can be represented by a hyphen, you know, and what does it mean for, for all of us? Apparently in the village, they knew this person, so several generations afterwards, this person was known. I mean, nowadays we barely know, uh, know the, you know, fourth or fifth generation of our grandparents, which is kind of normal because we just don't pay attention. But this was the one that actually left legacy, right? He was actually actively leaving something. Um, then I asked myself, okay, so what does it mean to leave a legacy? Because I knew that there would be a topic for legacy. And um, well, if you think about uh, about the things that surround us in the nature, everything leaves a legacy. I mean, I look at this tree here and it leaves a legacy, it leaves seeds. Subconsciously, unconsciously, however we want to call it, but there is a legacy behind, right? If you don't do anything to prevent this legacy to grow, then very soon you will be having a small forest around. That's a legacy. Maybe it's negligible, but it's a legacy, right? This is something behind. Um, I also think that most of the people, they also leave legacy, uh, mostly physical legacy by just having an offspring. These will be kids. But for me, what is really important is the legacy that we live consciously and purposefully. Um, and this is what actually drives uh, <clears throat> drives me uh, being a student in this in this life in the last let's say five years to see how I can be of inspiration to others. So to others, so it is something to be left behind. Um, here is another story. A traveler is traveling through a town and he meets three people, three men working. One of them. He asked the first one, what are you doing? He says, well, I'm laying bricks. Okay, he passes on and he meets another one. What are you doing? I'm erecting a wall. Okay, cool. So he passes on and he meets the third one. What are you doing? I'm building a cathedral. So actually the three, uh, the three men, they were doing the same thing, right? And they were laying bricks. The difference between them is that the first one was just having a job. The second one was having a career, or the third one was having a purpose. All of them would be leaving a legacy, right? I mean, every something will be left behind them, but there was a difference, right? And the difference was in their intention. The difference was in their belief. Um, and I would say that the, this difference comes from the moment when you decide to make a difference. So there is a moment of decision when you decide, okay, now I'm changing things. I will start first with my with myself. The buck stops here, right? From now on, I'm just changing things. And they might not be, uh, you know, as um, as big as the person with the erected, uh, you know, a monument, but they still mean something for yourself, for your family, for the neighborhood, uh, maybe for the for the city, and maybe for the country, maybe for the planet. I. When I grew up, I grew up as a as a kid um, under the communism, uh, and at that time we were exposed mostly to the Russian folklore. And um, I, I must tell you that I I didn't know Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck until I became twenty five. You know, we had no exposure to those guys, so we were exposed to different types of folklore, uh, and most of the fairy tales were actually talking about elderly people and their wisdom. I mean, nobody cares about the elderly people. I mean, I was a kid, so I was like, mm, yeah, mm, why is it so important? Years passed by, and I started realizing that elderly people have memories, and those are memories that have already been in the past. So this is something that is left. And if we want to call ourselves beings, the most actual and realistic being is the being of those people, because they already have it. They had actually a bigger volume than myself. 
So the most real being is the being of, of an elderly person. So I started respecting elderly people because they have left legacy. And I started respecting more and more those who actually took a real decision to leave legacy. So for me, I, I don't want to prolong this conversation more because we have other speakers, but for me, what is really uh, important to share here is, is a message, and I'm actually an acute student of it, is let's take a decision to make a change. Let's see this change, right? And a decision moment is important because the awareness that brought this decision is already a sublime step forward. On our way forward, until we reach the, the purpose that we want to reach, there will be giants on the way. And we need to wrestle with those giants. But a decision needs to be taken to, to move forward. There is no backwards. I got tired of, of doubting my beliefs and believing my doubts. So at some point, I decided to decide and make a choice. And this is a given right to us. So let's do it and go forward and create a legacy. Thank you, guys. Wow, thank you, Nasco. Loads of nuggets in there. Absolutely unbelievable. And I think the point you raise about the hyphen yeah. and the dates on a stone, that, that's actually kind of... Why have I never thought about that? You know, that actually that hyphen contains someone's life. Mm. It's massive. Wow. I need to tell you maybe a small side story here, and I, I will shut up, I promise. <laughs> um, <Me too. laughs> um, it, it, actually, it is a sad story, but um, for me, it had an impact. And this is exactly how I promised myself that I would be taking on, you know, and I will be responsible for my actions. My grandfather was also called Atanas Avajov with the same name. And in my country, when someone passes uh, passes away, then we have these obituaries. You know, they just put them on the on the wall. And uh, when he passed um, passed away, I I remember that I was coming back from school, and on our door, I see my name on the obituary because it was the same name, two dates and a hyphen. And I was like, "Wow, that's scary." You know, that's my name. <laughs> And then I said, well, I'm going to try to make this hyphen bigger and more prominent. Is what I promised him. Wow. Yep. I don't think I want a hyphen. I want a, I want a wavy line. <laughs> <laughs> it's your choice. This <laughs> I don't think I want a hyphen. <laughs> but that's right. That's, uh, uh, yeah, that's a thought as well, isn't it? Maybe things will change from here on in because we have we're now actually very conscious of that hyphen. I think we all need to get this in our wheels now, don't we? No hyphen. No hyphens. Like people jumping down the line. That way. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It was incredible, Nazco. Um, if I could yeah. live longer, um, I just loved the hyphen, but also that everything leaves a legacy. You know, mm -hmm. everything leaves its mark. He said, and I just thought that's so true. You know, from the trees that drop their seeds, the flowers, the air that we breathe. You know, we are continually leaving our legacy. It's just, I think we should all be living a positive legacy. Um, if only we, we all could do that. But incredible. I was just absolutely, yeah, captivated and loved the story about the bricklayer, the wall maker and the cathedral builder. Just, yeah, so, so thought provoking. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, very Thank nice. Very good. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Just also to pick up on the last, or one of the last things you said as well about um, doubting your beliefs and believing your doubts. I, I, again, you know, just really powerful stuff. Thank you so much. So now I'm going to hand you over to Kelly Ann. If you're ready to go. Oh yes, and of course in my in in my true to form, I uh, I wrote a little piece of article, and I'm going to uh, tie it in back when I was doing the writing start, challenge. Yeah, just give us a wee. A oh wee yes, yourself, please. 
Okay, Kellyanne, and I'm in Winnipeg, Canada, right dead center of Canada. Um, I have four daughters, one of which is getting married in two and a half weeks or two weeks. Two, yeah, actually two weeks tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I live with my husband in uh, my second husband uh in this area where it's going to be a part of my story so uh yeah i have been a lifelong i found probably back when i was a teenager my biggest gift was encouraging so i've always been an encourager because the if I get into a confrontation, the connection between my brain and my mouth just doesn't exist. So I thought ways, I found ways of just becoming positive, period. So this group actually has helped me embellish all that. So that is basically me in a nutshell. And Lovely. I have just recently, actually probably in the last couple of months, reignited my lifelong desire to write so i am now a writer the last five weeks have been kind of hard on me because i basically this is the first time in nearly five weeks i've actually sat at my desk <laughs> so <laughs> it's been i've had five weeks off and now i'm ready to get going like david had three weeks off and then we had two weeks of covid and now we're both negative, we're ready, I'm ready to go on, but the body is still in the healing mode. So five weeks is more than enough time. Kellyanne, we, you just said that you're always positive, so how come you're negative now? Oh, I'm negative. I'm teasing you, I'm teasing negative. you. <laughs> negative in COVID. Negative COVID, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. I'm just ready to get back to back to uh, uh, back to being routine, and routine helps. Routine absolutely helps. So, anyway, I'll get on with my story. So, and like I say, I wrote this uh, actually June third. I wrote it, and it was part of my nightly uh, habit that I was going to change back in the kibitz uh, tasks I think we did so as I sit on my front porch enjoying my morning coffee and watching the neighborhood come to life the church bell began ringing from the corner of the street behind us and a block away why it had rung like that for as long as I can remember 9 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m., like clockwork every day. I grew up in the area just a couple of blocks away, and in fact, I went to the elementary school that blocks the road at the end of the street. When I was young, that bell meant we were late for school, so we had to run two blocks to the school just as the bell rang for entry. It meant no playing with our friends before school that day. Today, however, I observed the ringing bell, Parents rushing their, child, their children out of their cars or kids running down the street to school. Times have changed, but not the bell. Nine, 12, six. Now the bell sounds different than it did 50 years ago. More technology, I guess. Living on the other side of the same school I went to as a young girl. I would have loved to live this close back then, it was always my favorite street when my brother and I delivered the local papers to this very house. The bell doesn't seem as loud, or is it because I'm closer to the main highway, or the trees are bigger? My brother and I used to try and jump over the, over the trees on the boulevard. Most of the houses have different paint, but something seems oddly familiar and timeless. Constant, the bell. Nine. 12, 6. To some, it's just a noise to start the day. 
just like any other alarm they hear. Some have stopped hearing it. To some, it's an annoyance. When I was, when I was young and heard the noon bell, it meant lunchtime as we raced home to go eat. Of course, mom was at home and ready for us. And then we would race back to play with our friends before the school bell rang. The evening bell meant supper and then playing with our friends outside. So many memories in that simple bell. Simply, nine, 12, six. I remember where the bell comes from, the church. The house we live in now was a part of the parish property when it was built in the late 1920s. The bell was a way for the church to remind people that it was still there and that it cared for you and looked after you consistently, not just nine, 12, six. The bell is a call to be kind and generous, to care for your neighbors, just as this community church looked after its parish in its beginnings, not just nine, 12, six. It's a call to worship, not just on Sundays, but all the time. When it rang off hours, you knew, good or bad, that somebody needed prayer. Funeral, wedding, or baptism, it was a time to pray, not just nine, 12, six. How many people ignore it and don't hear that bell anymore? But it, ha it hasn't forgotten. It remains consistent, like God's love, not just nine, 12, six. Sometimes in life, that bell is annoying. Sometimes, sometimes. To me, it's a reminder that however things change in the world, there are always some things that never change. Over the years, some things inside me needed to change, but there are some things inside me that never really changed. They are constant in everything I have ever done. Yes, some things are constant, like that bell. Do I need to make complicated plans, notes, or tasks? No. I have learned that the more I let go, the more simple life is. The more simple life is, the happier and focused I am. Like that simple bell. Do I change paths? Definitely. But one thing I know, and I am, one thing I know, I am and have worked hard at living consistently. Consistent in my kindness and generosity. Consistent in watching out for my neighbors and friends. Consistent in my worship of and love of for God. Consistent in my love for my husband and kids. Consistent in leading by example and showing my little part of the world who God really is. Not just nine, 12, six. Lovely, amazing. Thank you for sharing Thank you. this. Kellyanne. That was lovely, Kellyanne. <clears throat> Thank you. Absolutely beautiful. Mm. And I Kellyanne, agree. You have, oh, sorry. No, carry on, Anna. Yeah, you have just such a beautiful way of writing mm. and Thank articulating you. things. You know, it was like I could hear your voice on an audible book, you know, your own <laughs> yeah. one. That just, is like, actually one of my dreams hear it because yes. I'm like just mesmerized by it you know it's it was just absolutely yeah. loved it and it was so descriptive and you know and how, how sounds are linked with memories you know with the bell going oh, yeah how many times are we triggered by sounds and yeah. you know and just your legacy of wanting to be consistent be consistent with everyone around you you know, mm -hmm. with love and kindness and generosity. And I just, I just, it was fabulous. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, it's kind of funny. The bell still, it, it goes off. It, it's been doing it for as long as I can remember. And somebody forgot to change it to daylight savings. So it runs off at 8, 11, and 5 <laughs> right now. <laughs> so those are the winter oh. times. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was still consistent, right? That Absolutely, was consistent. still yeah. consistent. Yeah. So you're well, living in the street. Oh, sorry, you're living in the street that you always dreamt of living in. Absolutely, isn't that wild? Like it's like 
And the house be house beside me has a little dome um, window in the in the uh, roof, sort of like a half a dormer or a skylight. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just a fake window, but it's always been there. And I always dreamed of little gnomes in there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd wave at the little gnomes as I was going by. I mean, this is back when, like, it was just a community newspaper. So it was like every house got it. And we delivered the three streets. And it's like my family was part of the whole neighborhood. The city did a, gre a re-greening back then. So our our family actually on our street back then, three blocks away uh planted the trees in the boulevard so that was my young younger generation that planted these these boulevard trees and to see these 30-foot trees now that that Such we legacy. used to jump over yeah. <laughs> you know it's so it's like idea. yeah it's it's uh yeah so and you know, hearing yeah. the school bells ring and the kids running down the street, and if you're, oh, it would have been nice to live only to you know half a half a block away from school. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kelly. And that Thank you. Beautiful. And now I'm going to introduce you to uh, Robin. Yes, Robin with electricity. Robin with electricity. <laughs> Hooray! But all lights shine. Typical Robin. <laughs> so Robin Lee Nichols checking in from a lit Johannesburg, South Africa. <laughs> Good news all around. So yes, it's, it's wonderful to be here again. Thank you very, very much for having me. Um, yes, this, this topic of legacy has really got me quite confounded. And I was very, very thankful to have a little bit, I'm going to tell you a story because um, what's happened to me just on Wednesday ties in beautifully with, with what I want to share. Because first of all, let me just go back to legacy. Because it's, it's very different to doing a timeline exercise. As Nasco pointed out, you have that day you're born, when you do your timeline, you prospectively have 100 years on that timeline. I'm 50 years old, so I'm in the middle of that timeline. And now when we start thinking about legacy, we, we really have to go a little bit deeper than the timeline, because we're not just talking about the goals in the future and what we need to do to reverse engineer to achieve those goals. We've got to go into our core values. We've got to go into our purpose. And we've got to go into our intentions. And I've struggled with legacy. I really have. Um, when I was doing my NLP master uh, training, we sat in, in a training and we were asked to draw a tombstone. And we all drew the tombstone. And I knew what was going to come next. You know, it was, here lies Robin Lee Nichols. And we had to say, well, what is it that you want to leave? What is it that you want people to remember you by? And I've really always struggled with it. So I've, I've kind of avoided going deeper into timeline, specifically because I think um, it is a reality check. It is a massive reality check. And we have to be very purposeful about the remaining years that's left on our timeline. Um, but my mom answered my question for me. Now, on the 17th of August, 2015, my mom passed away. So it's just very recently that we've had her seventh, her seventh year anniversary. And I reposted a picture of my mom with a little bit of a, a little bit of a writing around what my mom was to me. And I then get a message from an old school friend. And I've got to go back now a little bit. In 1987, so this is what, 35 years ago, and I actually did the maths here, because I'm terrible at maths. 
1987, 35 years ago. <laughs> I mean, even that number boggles my brain. I am 15 years old. And I get home from a swimming garden because that is all I do. I swim, I'm active, I'm sporty. You know, I'm, I'm, I don't do the hair. I mean, I don't do my hair now as well. But I'm, I'm that type of a person who, you know, sporty, tracksuit pants. And I'm that type of a 15-year-old. My mom comes into the room. I'm doing my homework. And she says to me, listen, Robin, at standard eight, it was the year I was in. And I think what you should consider is signing up to be a debutante. I remember looking at her going, what, you want me to do what? You want me to be a debutante? And my mom, knowing me the way she knew me, said, just hang on a second. Just hang on a second. It's going to be great fun. You know, you can get involved. And I was very involved in the school. My mom was very involved in the governing body of the school. But I was involved in sporting activities and the like. So the debutante's ball was really, really far away from me even thinking about doing it. But my mom was one of the organizers and she decided that this would be a great opportunity for me, introvert Robin, to go out and spread her wings as a debutante. So I said to her, okay, I'm gonna go to one practice and it was dancing practices every Sunday. I, I, I think it was for six months leading up to this massive event. This massive event was going to be hosted in one of Johannesburg's famous hotels. Um, there were caterers, there were flower arrangers planned. It was a whole toot. And all of the all of the all of the young girls in Standard 8 were going off to do this debutante ball. And I went to one of the dancing practices as I promised my mom. And I think I arrived there thinking, you know, okay, I'm gonna do this thing. And then I'm gonna tell her, okay, I tried it. I'm going swimming. To my comfort, my little circle of friends were there. And we did this, we did this little practice, this little thing that we were going to have to do. And by the end of the evening, we were all feeling really, really, really positive about this debutante's ball thing. We had spoken about how we were going to fundraise and we had picked, we even picked out our partners that we were actually going to take to this debutante's ball. So you can just imagine, you know, now it was getting dresses and all fancy dresses and kitted out and preparing these 15-year-old boys and girls to present themselves in a very, very civilized manner at a certain date in time. And it really turned out to be one of the most incredible experiences of my school career. And I think my mom knew that I would love it. I think my mom knew that I would love being together in that, in that community with my school friends, out of the school environment, um, doing things with them on the weekend, which is something I didn't regularly do. You know, I was at the swimming galas, things like that. And so I think my mom, I think my mom definitely had a master plan. So fast forward to this Wednesday, I get a message from an old school friend. And it starts off by saying, Robin, I need to tell you about something that I found out from my mom about your mom. And I remember my heart sinking. I thought, you know, what can this be? <laughs> and she said, you know, unbeknown to us, her and her sister, um, the Deb's ball that we attended, your mother paid for our tickets to attend. And I've just recently found this out. And I was absolutely gobsmacked. I was gobsmacked because I didn't know about it. And we're talking... You know, we, we're talking such a length of time that has gone by. My mother never, ever said a word. Um, my school friend had fallen on hard times. Um, and she was going to have to pull out of the Deb's ball. But my mom paid for her and her sister. 
But you know, you know, I sat there and and I shared this message with with a friend, and we we both had a bit of a tear because for me it wasn't about my mother paying money for that. It was about my mother doing that, but not saying a word. Just you know, just getting on with it, making sure that my circle of friends was with me along the way and making sure that we were all there together. And that's exactly the legacy that I want to leave. I, I, don't, I don't think I go a day, I don't think I go a day now especially without going back to my mother and what she taught me and the legacy that she's left. I think she'd, if, if she looked at me, my sister and my brother, she'd be very, very proud of the people we, we've become. But that's because of her legacy that she left us. And I often think that this is why I struggle with my own legacy. Because I often think that perhaps because I don't have my own children, that there's no legacy for me to leave. But I, nothing could be further from the truth. Because each and every one of us have this incredible timeline of history, whether that history has been a supportive mother or not, or a supportive father or not, it's those little lessons that we have learned along the way that we take with us that really gets into our core values and our purpose and being really intentful about how we live our life and being mindful that, you know, my, my legacy and all I really want to do is hopefully be a guiding light for, for, for others, exactly like my mom was. So yes, um, I'm exceptionally grateful that this actually happened because I'm not sure that I would, I'm not sure that I would have such a meaningful contribution for, for, for this evening. Um, and it's, it's very interesting that because when we are stuck when we are stuck for ideas and inspiration, things like that, all we have to do is we've got to go back to our timeline. We've got to tap into those memories and those sounds and those smells and things like that because that's when that legacy pops into play. So, yes, thank you very much for listening. I appreciate it. Thank you, Robin. Amazing. Thank you, yes. Robin. That was beautiful. And it is just lovely to hear the, the love and the respect and, you know, with which you hold your mum and with which you acknowledge you are the person you are today and the person who is able to give so much to others because of your mum. Mm. It's, it's, it's really beautiful. There's a... There's, there's, there's a lovely um, video of Andrew Garfield talking about his grief and his mother and a legacy. And I love it because he says, um, he says he never, ever wants to let go of that grief. Never, ever, ever wants to let go. Of it. Because all that grief is, is that grief is unexpired love and that drives him to that legacy. And I think that's, that's beautiful. I love the way of looking at that unexpired love. It's just, yeah, that's so good. Um, your mum just sounds wonderful and she lives her legacy in you. Everything she's done, she's passing to you and everyone you touch. Like even this space here, you're leaving your legacy in us too, you know? And you're sharing it. You do. You share things so beautifully and you impact us so, I think, more than you actually know. Um like your core values, your principles on core values and things like that, it's just absolutely inspiring. And it makes us, what makes me take a step back and think about my core values a lot. And resilience, you talk about resilience a lot as well. And about being, that word comes up and I think of you. So you are continually leaving a legacy out there by everyone you touch and everyone you impact. Um, I wrote, your legacy lives in all of us. 
yeah. you know and I just thank you for that share it was beautiful and raw and yeah your mum sounds incredible that whole giving without having to re- expecting to receive anything you know she never did she never yeah. expected to receive a thing and it came back how many years later seven years later after her passing yeah. you know and your friend contacts you it's incredible mm. so thank you for sharing that amazing thank, thank you very much Anna appreciate it Okay, um, I am going to round off the shares with the legacy um, that I'd like to leave. And as always, I've gone, I've taken it quite literally. Um, possibly not gone quite as deep as as the rest of you. But for me, and I'll, I'll, I'll repeat what you've all heard and you're probably fed up hearing me saying, this group started because I went through my life with bouts of real mel- melancholy, real flat, dark places um, for a whole raft of reasons. But, um, and I want, I, I spent my life, even as a teenager, looking for something that would enable me to flip myself out of that. Like Robin, for me, it was sport. I ran just to run away from my head and run away from the emotions and things that I kind of dragged about with me, which was ridiculous. Now, it's taken me a few years to to realise that they didn't need to be dragged about with me and it was my choice to drag them about. But anyway, you know, you live and learn with personal development. But I kind of figured that if I had felt that way, then there was a good chance there were others out there that, you know, um, went through the same thing and that were looking for, you know, ways of dealing with that that didn't cost anything and that didn't necessarily involve other people or, you know, just ways that you could actually lift your own your own spirit, your own mood, your own vibration um, and feel happy. Genuinely happy. I'm not talking about painting a smile on and pretending to the world that everything's all right. I'm just talking about actually feeling happy and content inside yourself. So as part of another piece of work I've been doing uh, with the Museum of Happiness, because I became a happiness facilitator. uh, So it's all kind of going in the same direction. And obviously gratitude plays a massive, massive part of that. Um, and you know, the more the more grateful you are for what's coming in, the more that appears and the more that you're able to give out. So one of the things that I did as part of that work was create a treasure chest of um self-compassion. So when it's all getting a little bit much or the, the clouds are starting to gather above your head, a, just a wee treasure chest that you can go and open and it's full of things that make you feel better. So if you will indulge me, I'm going to share that with you uh, tonight. So just bear with me a wee second and I shall flip in uh, to the presentation. I need to remember to actually share my screen before I reduce the size of it. And let me that and we can go to do that. So, I'm always looking forward to your presentation, Susan. <laughs> Death by PowerPoint or Canva, whatever way you want to look at it. <laughs> so, um, the self compassion treasure chest, uh, as I said, a wee box of tools to help when you're looking for something to, to flip that blip, as Anna would say. So, so when we open the treasure chest and we look inside, it's full of golden nuggets. Lots and lots of different just gems that we can use to help lift our spirits. And these include things like meditation, our favourite music, gratitude, just having a rest, love to give and feel loved, physical activity, sport, dancing, whatever that may be. Creativity, kindness, and compassion. 
And that's what makes up our golden nuggets. So more often than not, when you're feeling that way, the simplest of ideas are the best. And often when our energy is low, it has to be simple because if it if it takes a lot of energy and a lot of effort, we won't do it. So first of all, that we that we heart there is about giving kindness, giving love, giving it out, because the way for it to come back to us is by giving it to others. Often what we need to feel in ourselves, the best way of finding it is by finding someone else who needs that as well and giving it. Journaling, and we've all talked about the power of journaling, um, whether it be, as Kellyanne does, you know, more in-depth writing, whether it be bullet points, whether it be journaling what we're grateful for, two things, five things, ten things, it doesn't matter. Quite often, just the art of taking a pen and paper and getting started is the, is the difficult bit, but when we actually start writing, it just all this stuff starts to come out. And I love this because I've got more gratitude journals and notebooks full of scribbles than anybody. They're everywhere. And I keep finding them and they're years old. And I find some of the things that I've written that I'm grateful for and it brings back happy memories of things, daft things sometimes that have happened um, mm. that you forget about because, it, you know, they, they're maybe a wee bit mundane, but when you, you bring them back as memories, they're really special. So there's you can't deny the, the power of journaling. So the next one, music. Um, and I, again, I often laugh because Robin set us a task to come up with our three feel-good songs. I think I gave you a list of 16 because I couldn't get it down to three. <laughs> and that became my playlist when I was running, when I was in the car, when I was walking the dog. And it just felt so good. But let's take it a step further. Get the headphones on and dance. Dance like there's no one watching and sing like no one can hear you and when you do that when you've got headphones on it's hilarious <laughs> or it is for other people anyway because <laughs> you can't hear yourself so and finally I, I talked there a wee bit about you know go for a massage go for a hand massage go for a back neck massage something physical that relaxes you and just makes you feel good makes your body feel special there's, I mean, you can't underestimate the power of that, the power of touch. It's really, really important. And, you know, it's not about being selfish. It's not about being self-indulgent. It's about, you know, refueling yourself. You don't expect your car to go anywhere if you don't put fuel in it. We need that too. And we need fuel in all different, all different types of fuel. You know, we need love. We need food, we need water, we need exercise, we need energy. We need so many different things to enable us to function at full capacity. So, and I, I, I kind of laugh when I bring up this one because it's about meditation. <laughs> and I have a lifelong battle with meditation. So <laughs> I figure if I do, there's other people out there that do too. But anyway... Meditating, you can do it inside, you can do it outside. You can do it in the garden, in the house, in your bed, sitting in the loo. You can do it anywhere. It's just about focusing on your breath and finding some quiet time. And again, you can do it just by focusing on your breath and nothing else. Or you can have a guided meditation on a recording, either through YouTube or whatever. There are so many different ways that you can do this. It's such a personal thing and it's so powerful. We've even got, we've got Genevieve in our own group who does a meditation for us every Wednesday. And she did a, a 28 day challenge um, where she provided a meditation every day and that's all in this group. So, you know, there's something there for everybody. Um, and one of the, the misconceptions about meditation is that you have to get your mind quiet and that if you're not getting your mind quiet, then it's not working. And 
it's absolutely not the case. You know, we are wired that um, we have 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day and 95% of those thoughts are the same 10 thoughts on repeat. And those thoughts, the meditation, the, the skill in it is actually like, just acknowledging that you're thinking and saying, well, my mind's wandered, I'm back thinking again, I need to get back to the breath. Doesn't mean the meditation's not working, it's just about having the, the, the discipline to bring yourself back. So, and again, I'm doing a bit of work on that and the science behind it and how it changes the structure of your brain. So, you know, it is beneficial to you um, and it definitely can help pick your mood up. So I've talked about journaling and I've talked about um, just taking some time. But one of the other things that, you know, can cause us to get into a bit of a funk or get a bit down is when we start to feel overwhelmed and we start to feel there's so much going on. Our lives are so busy. They're busy with work. They're busy with family. They're busy with the house. They're busy with the dogs. They're busy with technology. They're busy with online business. They're busy... Da, 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 and it's constant and your brain is going at 200 miles an hour. We are not wired for our brains to be active 24-7. And modern technology has created a completely unnatural situation for us. So often going back to pen and paper and planning can be really, really uh, constructive for us and actually just writing things down and seeing it and actually being able to put a pen through something and throw it away when it's done. You know, there's, there's something really satisfactory about doing that. And it's about finding the bits that work for you and putting them all together so that you know where you're going, you know what you want. If you can find your purpose in there, that's the cherry on top. But actually bringing it all together like a big jigsaw and taking yourself forward, knowing that you're, you're going, you're following your own path. And you know where that path's leading. And again, so many of us don't go set. We don't take the time to figure out what it is we actually want. We know we don't necessarily want where we're at or what we're at at this point in time, but we don't actually know what the end goal is for us. You know, so when we figure out what it is we want, then read and learn and explore it because actually, in doing that, we might find that it's not what we thought it was and we actually change direction. But if we don't explore it, we'll never know. So educate yourself. Spend some time figuring it out. So the fun nuggets, these are just some silly things that, you know, people who are maybe a wee bit more serious won't want to get involved in any of this stuff. If you've got a wee daft side to you, you won't mind, you'll do it, you'll feel silly, you'll laugh, and hey, job done, you've lifted your vibration, you know, walk past a mirror and give yourself a high five in the mirror, smile at yourself, make a face at yourself, you know, why not, if it puts a smile on your face, it's worth doing, um, reach out to a friend, now, I say this with a caveat, if you're feeling down, We've got friends who lift us and friends who energise us. We've also got friends who drain us. And at the point where we need to lift our, our vibration, we need to lift our energy, we need to lift our spirits, choose your friends that you reach out to carefully. Okay. And ask for help. See if you're struggling. Don't struggle alone. There's no need for it. But how many of us you know, from time to time, feel that we are that person for everybody else. But actually, in that moment, when it's all crashing around your ears, you actually have to dig quite deep to figure out who it is you would turn to. It's worth actually spending a wee bit of time thinking about who those people are so that you know, when the shit hits the fan, you know who it is you're going to go to. Oh, my computer's doing strange things, as it does. So, ah, back. 
So the fun nuggets, um, as I said, high five in the mirror. Give yourself a kiss in the mirror. See if you've got a mirror in your bedroom. Nasco, get your lippy on. We won't tell anybody. <laughs> you know, give yourself a kiss in the mirror. You know, um, if you've got animals around you, get out and play with them. Now, I have included a cat there just so I don't upset anybody. I'm a doggy person, as you all know, and I know most of you on here are. But you cannot beat getting out and playing with a dog for lifting your energy. Um, if you live near a beach or near a forest, get out into nature. If you've got water, get your shoes off and get your feet wet. You know, mud. Get your feet muddy. When was the last time any of us walked barefoot through mud? You know, and folk think you're mad when you do. I remember we had snow last year and I went out in my pyjamas and I took my slippers off and I walked about barefoot in the snow and took pictures. My husband thought I'd lost my, you know, completely lost my senses. He's like, what are you doing? I said, I want to feel what snow feels like against my skin. He's like, all oh, right, okay, I'm away to put Caitlin. <laughs> so... You know, again, it's about getting into nature, feeling, you know, that the world is a much bigger, much more important place, but that you can absorb that energy from it. Sleep. Nothing beats a right good sleep. And if you can snuggle up with a dog or your partner or whatever, big teddy bear, a good pillow, whatever it happens to be, snuggle up and get a right good sleep and you will feel better for it. And obviously... Hugs and kisses, can't beat it, cannot beat it for making you feel loved and for giving love. So protect yourself, you know, set your boundaries because there are going to be people there, you know, that aren't going to be good for your positive vibration, your positive emotions. So if people are putting upon you or people are asking too much of you, or you just don't like, you know, what they're giving off, you just say no. And that's not about being, as I said, selfish or self-indulgent or thoughtless or anything like that. It's about saying, no, I'm sorry, I can't do this. And I don't want to do this. Um, avoiding gossip and negativity. I've said so many times, I think with Jim Rowan, you become the average of the five people that you spend most time with. So choose those five people wisely. Choose who you listen to, who you go to, who you talk to wisely, because they have a massive impact on your life, more so than you'll ever, ever realise. So just a wee bit about positive uh, self-talk when faced with kind of difficult situation or setbacks think short term don't go into the oh my goodness you know this is going to happen and then this is going to happen and then this is going to happen concentrate on what it is that's annoying you just now think this too shall pass excuse me zoom out will it matter in five to ten years time probably not to be fair, most things, you know, even the big things, if you think five, ten years down the line, they will move. Think local, only you, don't compare, don't compare what's going on in your life to what's going on in other people's lives. Um, keep things in perspective, don't, you know, uh, turn molehills into mountains. I'm mixing my metaphors there, but anyway. Um, try to always use positive language. You know, um, flip words failure for an obstacle, downfall for a setback, the word horrible for challenging. If you can actually start to eradicate uh, negative words from your language, then as you use positive language, people around you will use positive language and you'll start to see different changes, different currencies round about you because you become a positive person. That's what you attract. I've talked to most of you, I think, here will have heard me talking about your internal weather. Um, you know, whether it's a bit cloudy, whether it's blue skies, whether it's feeling a wee bit overcast, whether it's there's a storm brewing, the air needs cleared, whatever it happens to be. Don't, you know, ignore your internal weather for too long. 
and go and get your treasure chest and find those nuggets when you need to do that. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for this presentation, Susan. Amazing. And very, very, very good. Memory. Thank you, Susan. So I like cool. your yeah. Go ahead. I like your um your idea on meditation and hi Monty. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, I've always seen meditation as, yes, just the breathing, but choosing what you're focusing on. That's why I like the guided guided meditation, because it helps you choose. Oh, hi, Cassie. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, because you need to choose what you're, yeah. what you're, um, the only thing, yes, we, we need to focus and slow down our brains, but our brains will never stop. But if you try and change of trying to eliminate a thought, it has to be replaced because when you eliminate something, it creates a vacuum mm -hmm. and your mind will automatically choose whatever it's familiar with. So if you're trying to change your thought process and everything else, then you need to focus and choose what you're going to focus on. So you fill that void. And uh, we're working on that quite in depth with David and anxiety right now. So <laughs> he can't just, no, I don't want to think that. Well, what are you going to think? Mm -hmm. Choose what you're going to think. Be purposeful. I think so, well, yeah. actually, Kelly, and, and it's not a, a, a substitute for anything kind of professional in any way, shape or form. But there was another bit I did, and it was about the the mind characters. And that's absolutely amazing. And it comes out time and time again. Mm -hmm. People say things subconsciously, and you find yourself going, aha. And that's one of those things when you, you, you become aware of that, then you can say, that's just a thought. Actually, yeah. that's that at play. And it takes it away from becoming an emotion that's attached to the thought. Absolutely. And it, it is amazing stuff. So if, you, if you're working on that with them. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what we're working on. So it's a process. <laughs> and throw COVID in there. Good grief. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, it's been an interesting couple of weeks. <laughs> Thank goodness you're coming through the... the, the oh, yeah. The oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But it was beautiful, share, Susan. I love you. I love your presentations. Thank you. I mm. I, I thought a bit when it came to the meditation thing because I know how you struggled with meditating. <laughs> and it's like, internally, I was like... <laughs> But there was something like, I remember going through a stage where I was overthinking things like a lot. This is years ago. And I was just trying to like, just quiet in the mind, knew nothing really about meditation or anything then, but really trying to quiet the mind. But I suppressed my thoughts mm -hmm. rather than acknowledging and letting them move on. And that's what I'm learning to do now. You know, your thoughts are there for a reason, but I think I must have had, you said 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day I think I must have had double that because I remember my mind just being active 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 the whole time and it was exhausting um and it, it does no good to suppress them but to acknowledge them and let them move on and that's something that I've learned with meditation you can still have thoughts you know focus on your breath but you can still have thoughts but it's about letting them pass and letting the next one flow in next, next one pass and you know and acknowledging them rather than trying to stop them but Susan I think your legacy in my mind you know you're a gratitude goddess um but more, you're more than that you're a community builder um you're a mother amazing mother I know that I've met Shannon I've met you know you're an amazing wife I've met Scotty you're an incredible friend you know and one thing you said about reaching out to people and I know I'm pretty sure that you when you're struggling and stuff that's one of your you you need to do that as well you know I, a lot of the time we talk about these things and there's lots of things that I talk about and I need to practice what I preach you know we're all here for you and we all love you so much you know um you're a game changer and an influencer not a Botox 
big boobs. Well, you have big boobs. But, 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 <laughs> Botox. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. <laughs> you're not one of those influencers. You're, you're, you're incre- in a positive influencer. You're incredible. Everything is big, right? Everything is big with you. Yeah. <laughs> the dogs are big and, you know. Oh, but your, your legacy is bigger. Your legacy is bigger than you. That's another thing, you know, you are incredible and we wouldn't all be here talking about this and having this conversation if it wasn't for you. And I think you need to, yeah, acknowledge yourself in this too. Um, You know, you were saying about people getting their feet muddy. It doesn't happen often. My feet are always muddy. You just see the state of my bar. That's one thing that I do (laughs) to get my feet mud. But anyway, thank you for that share. It was beautiful. I'm going to stop talking now. Love you heaps. Thank you. You too. I really love to see you soon. Thank you, everyone. So thank you everyone for your time and your energy and your input tonight. Really, really enjoyed it. And I hope everybody watching or anybody and everybody watching this on the replay enjoy it as much as I think we've enjoyed doing this tonight. So thank you.